Hey folks, today we're going to play with something uh, fun with the Raspberry Pi. So uh, it's a cold brew is what we're going to install today, but the main reason I chose it uh, because I've been playing with it lately and it's one of those other things you can install. Uh, and I actually will have another video about a, how to install it with PIP instead, but this is actually grabbing the Raspberry Pi image for Colibri. Uh, now I want to introduce you a little bit to the Raspberry Pi. Um, so I, I like the Pi, the Pi 4 is what I'm using for this because I'm going to use the USB 3 option to boot it directly from, so the USB 3 are the blue ports. Um, that, that allows me to boot it from an external USB drive and there's nothing special that you have to do. So um, if you notice, I, I do have a, a case that came with a fan and stuff for my Raspberry Pi. I can link to a couple of those below. Uh, most of them will come with uh, an internal uh, well, a card that you can use to, to boot. Usually they have noobs on it. Um, and that's great to get started. This is, we're not actually gonna need the card um, for what we're doing today. So, uh, by the way, with the kit, I usually, I mean, since it's a mini uh, HDMI, usually you need a, an adapter that you, will come in most of the kits. And then, of course, the last thing is uh, power supply. So, and I, with, with the power supply, I like, so it's a USB-C. I like the one that has uh, some type of a switch to turn it on and off. Um, now they have buttons as well, that's fine, um, whatever you want, but I, I want to be able to turn it on and off without unplugging it uh, so that we don't uh, ruin the plug going into the wall or have to keep unplugging, and, uh, unplugging it into the device so we don't ruin that port. So those are a few things I look for. Once again, I'll, I'll link to a couple uh, down in the description. So uh, in order to install Colibri, we need to download it. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll leave this page in there. Um, because this talks about getting started with the Raspberry Pi, but uh, it's, we're gonna click on this one to take us to the page to... So as we get to this page, we need to scroll down. And today we're gonna be using the download image. In another video, I will install it this way. And I'll install it on a Raspberry Pi, but you can install it on almost anything this way. Um, but there's also Windows, Mac, and then a Linux uh, Ubuntu D, uh, Debian version. So, uh, but this is the one we're using. Uh, when you download it, it, it comes up, it's a zip. So you're gonna have to unzip it um, before you go to what uh, we're gonna do next. Um, but uh, actually there's one more thing first. So we're gonna have to get this Raspberry Pi imager if you're on Windows. Uh, if you're on Mac or Linux, you can use DD. Um, but uh, it might, it'll e be easier for most people to use this and also DD, you have to be careful. You don't overwrite your drive that you're using. Otherwise you might destroy your system. So uh, driver, Raspberry Pi Imager helps to make it very difficult to destroy your system. So um, anyway, down here, you come all the way down to the bottom and go to the downloads page. And then once again, it, so it knows I'm on Linux, so it's trying to push me towards Ubuntu. Uh, the one we're used is for Windows. So just click on whichever one fits you the best and go ahead and download it and, and run it. So moving on, we've got it installed. We're gonna use a custom image. It's gonna pull up a dialogue. Sorry, I didn't capture the dialogue. Uh, and we'll, you'll select the image from there. And then it only gives you the options for the storage device. We're using a, a five terabyte USB external drive to do this. So this will be able to allow for a lot of offline content. Now it should write it to it pretty quickly because it's writing a small thing even though it's to the five terabytes. And then when you um, boot it up the first time, it should expand to uh, use the rest of the disk. So you can see it's almost done and we're good. And then it'll verify it. So uh, this tool is really nice because it, uh, once again, you, it only let me select external drives. So it didn't let me overwrite my drive that I'm using. And then uh, you can look for the image. And once you've unzipped it, it ends with IMG. So. Um, and it's done, so let us continue. So the next thing we're gonna do is boot it, and I've recorded that, so um, it 
takes a little while and it's going to get cranky with me because I don't have an SD card in it, but it'll go through and it will find uh, the boot option for uh, USB as it's booting through. Uh, it does take, like I said, it takes a little while. So I think this first time out it's, it's 30 seconds, um, but as it goes through, you'll see that uh, it d eventually gets there. So. Uh, that was the Raspberry Pi loading screen. You can see that it's now uh, going. It, eventually, it's going to pause a little bit while it resizes the, the disk, um, which it, yeah, right here, it's resizing the root file system. And it did it pretty quick. It was just re regenerating the SSH uh, host keys. So as it goes through this, um, it will set everything up, set the hosting service. Now, the Documentation does mention there will be some failures, which uh, they should be coming up shortly. Uh, the first time things boot up, it does take a while. Um, and then one of the other issues I've seen a lot with Raspberry Pis, uh, especially with the Linux uh, file system, if people just shut it down and not nicely, sometimes it gets corrupt and it has to go through and do a check and make sure and get things back to uh, terminal. So here's the failures. That uh, we read that I mentioned we are on the documentation that um, would show up. They're not a big deal, um, but it, it is something that I, I don't know if it'll occur on the second and third boots. Um, it's getting things set up the initial time, but it could it could happen on all boots um, with the Raspberry Pi and with any system when you're first setting it up it's not going to be set up securely. Uh, almost no systems come out uh, of the box wanting to be secure. And this is a, an even more interesting thing because it's uh, ideally it's meant to be offline. So this is set up to be able to allow people to have access to learning content that don't have internet access. So that means it's going to be very hard to patch this system. It's going to be very hard to update the content. To do. So there's just a lot of things that have me a bit uh, uh, worried about this um, from a security standpoint. But if it's not connected to the internet, it's only locally that you need to worry about. The moment it's connected to the internet, there's some other things you need to worry about. But there are little ways to uh, resolve that. And we see that it's uh, ready to log in. So that's great. Uh, we're not going to log into it because we're going to get to it through a web, through a web browser. So, so I went. To, I'm going to my Wi-Fi settings. I'm going to connect to this Colibri, uh, which, by the way, I did. It did make me log in uh, for the first time with the user ID and password. You should definitely change that. The command to change a password is passwd in Linux. Um, so we're connected, and. At this point in time, let's actually go to the page before we do anything else. So, so this is just trying to load Colibri for the first time. It's going, it's there. So this is a five terabyte system. In fact, if we come, um, let's do this. I'm gonna bring up a terminal. Um, control shift. So make that big for you, and we'll log into it from here as well. So SSH um, pi at ten dot ten dot ten dot ten. Oh, and I need to fix something. Let me pause that really quick. Okay, I paused it really quick while I fixed it. So it's just I already had a key for that because I've done this before. Uh, so I had to edit and remove it from my known host, or I could throw some flags in there. But this is is great because this is telling me that, hey, this system that you're trying to connect to, you've seen before, but it's not the one that you've seen before. So it, it has the same name, but it's not the one you see, you've see you seen before. But So let's connect to it now. I should be able to do it. So this is going to add it to my known host. So right here, permanently added to known host. So I will have this again when I go to log in, I'll have to remove that uh, line. And the password, the default one um, for it is Kate Colibri Fly. Um, 
So I'm logged in. Now I'm just gonna PASSWD and change the password because I hate, I hate leaving default passwords. So, um, and uh, I didn't like it. So I, I, my password was a little too complex. I will change that. Well, I'll probably blow the system away, but so we're in there. You can see we can log into the system DF H. Uh, we can see that we have, um, it actually doesn't see all of the space. So I, that's something I do need to figure out. Um, but we have a Colbury instance up, it's ready to go um, and ready to get set up. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, there are so many options here to set up uh, Colbury. So I'm not gonna uh, make a video on that today, but I might make one in the future if you're interested. Uh, please let me know uh, what type of content you'd like to see. Uh, I might continue down this for a bit because I'm uh, helping out uh, with a project. So I will probably share the knowledge that I gain. So thank you.